The Australian wiring rules require that you must test the installation resistance of all wiring before you connect it to the supply. That means we have to do an installation resistance test using the MEGA. This test for installation resistance is a test between live conductors and the earthing system. What we've got drawn up here on the board is a simple diagram showing an active neutral and earth. Now you must be aware the live conductors are active and neutral conductors. The insulation resistance test is between live conductors to earth. To set our mega up, we must have it on the 500 volt range. We join the live conductors together, so that's the active and neutrals joined together. And one lead from our meter goes to those two live conductors. The other lead goes to the earthing conductor. When we apply the voltage from the meter to the wiring, that's applying 500 volts between active and neutral one side to the earthing system. We're trying to make sure that the active and neutral are not connected to the earth. So we want a very high value. The wiring standards say we need an insulation resistance of at least one mega. That's one million ohms of resistance, at least between live conductors to earth. When you're performing this test, one of the easiest mistakes to make is to not realise that the active conductor is often broken. If I had a switch in the active, that's in the off position, and I applied the test, I'd be testing between active from this point down to here, making sure it's not connected to the earth, but I'm not testing the other part of the active downstream from that switch. So performing the test, I must make sure all switches are on to keep the active continuous. That break could be from a circuit switch, it could be a main switch, it could be a circuit breaker. So make sure all of those devices are switched in the on position to keep that active continuous when you perform this test. I'm about to perform an installation resistance test on an entire installation. That's a test to make sure that the active is not connected to the earthing conductor and at the same time I'm making sure all of the neutrals are not connected to the earthing conductor. On our installation, is there an MEN installation? There is one connection between the neutral and the earthing conductor and that's at our MEN link, the connection between the earth bar and the neutral bar. So when performing this test, we've got to disconnect that MEN link. Removing the MEN link from the neutral bar, it has to come out for this test, it has to be disconnected, and it can stay disconnected for all of the tests that we're about to perform. So I've now removed that one connection between earth and neutral. I've now got to make sure that both the active and neutral conductors are continuous right throughout the whole installation. This is a brand new installation, which means that the supply is not connected to the consumer's mains. We've wired our consumer's main active down to the meter position. The meter tail that feeds up to the switchboard will be connected to the incoming consumer's main active when the meter is installed. But for the purpose of doing the tests, I've got to put a bridging lead in to join those two cables together. So now I've got the main active continuous through the meter position. It goes through into our main switch. I've got to turn the main switch on so the active is continuous through the main switch. It's now feeding all the circuit breakers and RCDs. I have to turn all the circuit breakers and RCDs to the on position. So our active is now continuous through to the circuit wiring. The circuit wiring now goes through to all our circuit switches, so I have to turn the circuit switches on so the active is continuous to the switch and from there to the fluorescent light and to the exhaust fan, etc. We've got some socket outlets as well. So I've got all of the switches turned on. That now keeps our active continuous throughout the whole installation. The neutrals are all continuous. The only possible point where it might not be continuous is where the neutral comes from your mains box through your meter panel. But I have already wired up a neutral link on the meter panel, so the main neutral goes into that link and the meter tail that goes up to the neutral bar is joined in this link. So I've got the, all the actives and all the neutrals, neutrals continuous throughout the whole installation. I now just need to put a link in somewhere to join the active and the neutral conductors together. I'll do that up at our mains box. So I've got active and neutral joined together. Both of those conductors are continuous right through the installation. I can now do the installation resistance test. 
I've got the mega here, I've got to make sure it's in working order. I'm just putting this electric switch to battery check, push the button, make sure the battery's in good condition. That looks fine. I'll go to the scale we're going to use, the 500 volts. Make sure the meter's reading accurately on that scale. So 500 volts, I've got the leads apart. I'm reading the outside scale, the pink one. Uh, that should be infinity mega ohms. So I'll push the button. Sure enough, the pointer staying up at the infinity end. Short the leads together. This should read zero mega ohms. As it does, so I know the meter now is in working order. This test, remember, is one side goes to the earth. That's the link connected to the earth bar. The other side of the meter goes to the active and neutral. I've got active and neutral joined together at the mains box, so I can go to a neutral or an active conductor. I'll test to the neutral bar itself. So one side's neutral, other side's earth. Do my test on 500 volts. The meter's saying I've got infinity mega ohms of resistance. The wiring rules say we have to have at least one mega ohm, at least one million ohms. I've got infinity mega ohms resistance. I've just proven that both the active conductor and the neutral conductor are not connected to the earthing system as is required.